and it's and it disappeared. Really interesting. Um, so in response to Janice of what the unholy trinity would be composed of, first I want you to look at what the holy trinity, what it looks like. Father God is the mastermind. It is in his mind, it, in him is the entirety of creation. All the laws and everything of creation is within him. And when he spoke, let there be light, just as the same when the angel spoke to Mary and said, you will conceive a son. The Holy Spirit overshadows the word. The spoken word is Jesus. The, over, the Holy Spirit overshadowing the word that came from the very mind of God, the very essence of the creator. The word and the spirit together create. So you've got the mastermind, you've got the word, the living word going forth, and you have the Holy Spirit overshadowing it and creating. That's why the words of God that come forth, that's why scripture is so important. That's why angels hearken and obey the voice of the word of the Lord. It's because that word, when it's overshadowed by the Holy Spirit, creates create something out of nothing. And that's how our words, when they're empowered by the Holy Spirit, create out of nothing. So the enemy, the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of darkness has a government. It has the mastermind, which was Lucifer, Baal, sun god. You've got, when he speaks, the speaking, the going forth is Leviathan, the twisting of the word. The spirit that overshadows that twisted word will be the queen of heaven, the womb of the queen of heaven, from which is birthed all the perversion, all the sorcery, all of it. It is just, they have to, the kingdom of darkness only can operate. They can't create anything new. They can only work within the framework and the model that has already been established. Does that make sense? So for those three to have such power, they had to be involved, I believe, in the, in the, in the initial fall and corruption of the angelic host. And then the other ones were, like I said, Johnny come lately, the ones that were put over the nations. Everything, everything in this whole kingdom has to do, oh, I am under such, I'm travailing as I'm sitting here. Everything goes back to worship. It is worship that in Ezekiel 28, it's out of this, this pride, out of this desire for worship that Lucifer fell. And why he fell is because he was walking among the stones of fire and it said he was just adorned with gold with sockets of gold and all these incredible gems. He was incredibly beautiful. And he looked at himself and he saw his glory. And he took, and it was just the reflection of the stones of fire walking on the mountain of God. It wasn't anything in him. It was the reflection of the glory. He took the glory for himself and said, I deserve to be worshiped. And what it says in Ezekiel 28 is he defiled the sanctuaries. Now that's really important to understand because we don't, we've got to, I mean, we've got to have an understanding of what's going on. We've got to understand that he, he defiled the sanctuaries. Now you say, well, in the, in the message, it says your beauty went to your head. You corrupted wisdom. Because he was full of wisdom. From the day of your creation, you were sheer perfection. And then imperfection, evil, iniquity was found in you. 
in many trading floors, buying and selling. This is the only place in scripture that mentions trading floors. So trading floors, if we take first mention, has to do with the trading between the fallen sons of God and this, the dark angels, the unholy trinity. By sin after sin after sin, by your corrupt ways of doing business, again, the trading floors, you defiled the holy places of worship, the sanctuaries. Okay. So he was the anointed cherub. He was one of the archangels. He was one of the ruling angels. And his beauty and his wisdom corrupted him. And he demanded worship. All of the fallen sons of God demand worship from the people, just as Lucifer did. This is pre-Adamic flood. The world did not begin with the creation of Adam and Eve. Literally, Genesis 1 is the recreation of the world. God would never create something because it says, in the beginning, you know, the waters cover the earth. It describes it as chaos darkness. God would never create something that was in chaos and in darkness. Now, if you want to get a really good study out on that, use Dake's Bible. And Dake's Bible will run you through creation one all the way through all the scriptures that are relating back to the pre-Adamic age. So there were sanctuaries where God was to be worshipped. And I believe every single high place in the world from Jerusalem to Babylon to Kathmandu to the to these places in India to places all through Africa, the United States, these were high places of worship, and that's why the enemy came back and has layered the worship of darkness on these places. They're all through the United States. They're all through Canada. Mexico City was all the pyramids, the different cultures of darkness. So it's important that we have a, we don't have a naive worldview, okay? So I can look at the world and people can say it's billions of years old and that's not a problem for me. I can hear about bones that they found of a pre-Adamic man or humanoid, whatever you wanna call them. That does not cause me any difficulty because I understand the destruction that came upon the earth because of their worship of Lucifer. The Lord judged the earth. There was a judgment. Now there's going to be a judgment again. But this time it's going to be the sons of God, the true sons of God, of which we've been made into a new creation, standing up against the fallen sons of God in our role as king and priest. Now we have to understand this. This is why we went through the order of Melchizedek the other day. This is why we have been doing such a work of purification and holiness. So in every culture, you know, there's, it's amazing. Um, there's a wonderful book I have. It's by George Otis Jr. And it's called the Twilight Labyrinth. And that began my journey in the nineties of understanding the kingdom of darkness. I do not dwell in darkness. I do not spend a lot of time looking at it, but I do not, am I not ignorant of the, the structure of darkness? And he said he, he traveled through the nations of the earth and he found all of these similarities, how it began from the waters, but in the waters, there was a serpent that was covered in stones, beautiful gemstones. In all of the creation stories of the earth and all these nations, how can the same story be told? And that's Lucifer when he was cast down. Okay. You know, he's the, he's the serpent with the gemstones. He didn't lose his gemstones. He did not lose his beauty. His beauty corrupted him. So before we go on, any comments? 
This is why we have to be cleansed. And this is why I could not let Shalini stay on the call. Okay. Any, raise your hands if you have questions. Yes, Christina. I just want to thank you that it gives a, a broad perspective and understanding before we go in. Thank so, you. In, yeah, in every nation, they're going to have their fallen sons of God. There were 32 in De Deuteronomy, I believe it was at 72. I think it's Deuteronomy 30 something. I'm not sure. I'll have to look it up, but it describes the establishment of those princes over the nations of the earth. Okay. Now, where I've gotten a lot of my teaching on this is from Robert, Robert Heisler. And he's an amazing teacher. And I sometimes at night, I'll just put him on. You know, he did one the other night on the only begotten son. And it was amazing how he discriminated between the sons of God and Jesus Christ is the unique. The word really means unique. May we have how do you spell his last name, please? Heisler? Heisler. H-E-I-L-S-E-R. Heisler? I think it's something like that. Heisler. 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 Heisler, like that. Charles Heisler. Um, or John, he oh, Robert Heisler. Um, I was reading from Ezekiel 28, which is this, the fall of the son, the king of Tyre. It's his funeral song. Uh, that's, if you want to understand, it was 11 through 19. The other scripture you have to really spend time in is Isaiah 40, or 14, I mean, which is also a judgment against. And today, when we go in, we might be using both of these scriptures. Because remember, we have the right to enforce the judgments written. And that's according to Psalm well, I'll get to you in a second, um, Danelle, I'm still speaking. Okay, Psalm 149, you know, it's very important. The Lord said today we were going to have to spend a lot of time in thanksgiving and a lot of time in praise. So I will ask you, but if I'm not feeling like we finished, get to the depth of what we need to get to. We will continue until I get the okay in the spirit that we can step in. I am not going to step in prematurely. Um, I'm going to go to the message again for that for execute judgments written. I um, in the, in the um, message, it says a portent of the vengeance on God defying nations, a signal the punishment is coming. Their kings chained and hauled off to jail, their leaders behind bars for good. The, judge, the judgment on them carried out to the letter <coughs> and all who love them in a seat of honor. I will go into this one. I'm not real happy with that one. I learned about the judgments written when the Lord gave me Psalm 147 as the judgment against the queen of heaven. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and a two-edged sword in their hand. That's what we must get into today is the high praises. To carry out vengeance out on the nations and punishment on the peoples. To bind their kings with rule chains and put their nobles in irons. To execute the judgments decreed against them. The judgments decreed against them are in scripture. Isaiah 47, Queen of Heaven. Isaiah 27, the judgment against Leviathan, which is that sword of the Lord. The, it's the mighty, powerful, relentless sword of the Lord. The um, Isaiah 14 is the judgment against Baal, the sun god, and also Ezekiel 28. There are different judgments written. And when the Lord gives you permission or when you sense, you can... This is what binds the kings. They are the kings over nations. You remember it said, the Lord very clearly told us um, it was the angel. And the angel, which angel, Dan? The angel, Michael? Mm -hmm. 
He did not rail against yeah, principalities. <clears throat> he said, the Lord rebuke you. The Lord rebuke you. You know, we have to stay in our lane if we don't want to be have trouble. Okay, it's very important we stay in our lane. It's very important we stay in, in the secret place of the Most High, Psalm 91. The Lord's been preparing us for this day. Um, Janelle? Yes, Jackie, it's Janelle. Oh, the reason they could not stay on the call is they had only watched one video and had not done the book. Yeah, okay, I, I got that on the on the chat, thanks. Right, okay, Rita, did you wanna say something? Okay, anyone have something to say? Now, if we're an army, we have to understand, we're the Grace Corps, we have to understand how the enemy works, we have to understand his kingdom. It's an organized kingdom, but it's also a kingdom in chaos because there's such jealousy between the different groups. Incredible jealousy. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, what, Dan? I don't know how that fits, but he did chapter 20, but the first two verses. <clears throat> okay. And got Luke 20, verses 1 and 2. One day as Jesus was instructing the people in the temple and preaching the good news, the chief priests and the scribes came up with the elders and said to him, tell us by what sort of authority you're doing these things, or who it is who gave you this authority. So it's, it's the authority. We, the authority we're doing this on is the authority that's been given to us by Jesus Christ. You know, when he left, he said, all authority I give to you. All authority I give to you. That's at the end of each of the gospel. He explains our authority. I give you authority. It's, it's if you have not meditated on those scriptures, on authority, you need to. You need to. You need to. I know I have. The other one I've is that that whole thing about trampling on serpents. serpents and scorpions and nothing shall any by any means harm you. When I began my walk with the Lord and I began my prayer walk, that was a scripture he impressed upon me and impressed upon me and impressed upon me. And I know it. Okay. I'm looking. I'm looking for our authority scripture. Here. Do you have it, Dan? No. Oh. <laughs> All authority. This is on Matthew 28, 18. Jesus approached and breaking the silence said to them, All authority, all power of rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now though, go then and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you. And behold, I am with you in all the days and on every occasion, all your days on every occasion until the very consummation of the age. All authority has been given to him on seven and earth. We stand in his authority because he is. we are in his realm and he is in our realm. And it's important that we understand this. It's important that we understand the authority. I've given you authority. He's told us, I've given you authority. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. If somebody could look up the authority scriptures, I'd appreciate it. I know they're there. We've just really blessed the Lord for this. Janice? I have a question about the authority. Um, even though we Jesus has given us all the authority, but 
I um, have come to realize that it, the, we have measures of authority, as in, if God is not authorizing you to do something, you shouldn't be doing it. Absolutely. Like we are saying now that, you know, God has prepared us. He has prepared. Now he's not authorizing us to go in and, and do this prayer. Right? Right. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Yes. The, he specifically this morning gave me the instruction, but he was very clear that I would be the voice piece. I would be the voice. Yes. That was what I wanted that clarification. So we get it that, you know, it, you don't just go fighting devils anyhow you see them. There has to be, we have to be authorized, even though we have all authority, right? We, we have to be authorized to do it. We're not in the heavenly realms, which is why I love doing courts of heaven. There is no warfare. It's incredibly important that you understand this. We are not doing warfare in the heavenly realms. Unless we go into the war room and we specifically loose weapons against the enemy. Now, it's not to say we can't have backlash if we are not cleansed. And being cleansed is incredibly important. And God covers us in our journey of cleansing. God cleanses us in our journey of cleansing. He's working with us. He's covering us. It's Psalm 91. It is by faith. Everything we do by faith. Now, if you don't have faith in reality, if authority is not real in you, and you know your authority, then you cannot stand in authority. No one can stand in authority who does not know they are, have authority. Mm -hmm. You can't stand. Now, when I was teaching at Ebor, what my students would tell me, because I had probably out of 180 students, I might have two white students, 10 Hispanics, Latinos, the rest were black. Many of them were black males. Now, I had never had any trouble with my students because when I stood in that classroom, I operated in such an authority and they knew it and they respected it. So authority, I believe it's, it's a reflection of both your office that God has, has given you, it's your prayers and the level of cleansing you have done and the journey he has taken you on in the nations. And it's, he is the one that puts authority in your mouth. He's the one that gives the sword of the Lord in your mouth. Now I was raised up in a way, word of faith church for 10 years. I learned the power of the written word of God to speak it. And I truly believed it, that when I spoke, the angels came in and completed the assignment. And I saw miracle after miracle after miracle and answers to prayers because I spoke the word of God with faith. And as I was on that journey of speaking the word of God in faith, I saw my authority increase. And as my authority increased, he took us to different nations. As our authority increased, he, he just, it's just, it's been quite remarkable. Now, I say this, and that authority was earned. It's earned authority. It's the, your metron is how Dan DeVell, I believe, would explain it. It's your measure of authority. I, I have paid a heavy price for that authority in my body, in my life, with sleep. There are so many ways I have paid a heavy price. Friendships, so many things. But God in his rich, you know, he just put in me such a ferocious desire to do his will that I have kept pressing despite everything. Verse 17 or 18, I had to mm -hmm. remark 16. Okay. Luke 10, 19, behold, I've given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you, hurt you. That is a scripture. If you have not taken it into your heart, if you have not prayed the scripture 
meditated this scripture, seen the scripture as truth, made it alive in your heart, you cannot come against the enemy. Because you can't have any mm -hmm. fear. You have to be fearless, be strong and of good courage. As you, um, and that's very, very important. Luke 10, 19, and then Mark 6, 7. And he called the 12 and he sent them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. Now the unclean spirits, it's important that we understand who they are. They would be the spirits of the Nephilim. The Nephilim were the spirits of the offsprings of the fallen sons of God and the daughters of Adam. Because they were spirit beings, they had no place to go except the earth. And all they could do is try to find a body, a house, a person, a place to inhabit. So they're, and that's, that's they're evil spirits. So there is a level, leveling. There's just like there's a leveling in angels. Not all angels are the same. Not all spirits are the same. Okay. And you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra and the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. We've already seen what those young lions and serpents are. I think the serpent there they mentioned was Leviath, Leviathan. So I, I'm, it's interesting today as we're doing this, I'm getting the sense that we're not going to do this court case today. We're not ready. We're not ready, but the teaching was important, okay? The teaching was really important. And you need, and I, I can't believe that I'm doing a teaching without any notes. Each one of you needs to evaluate your life you need to really look at, go through again, if you need to, the divorce decrees, you know, and really enter in the names of the gods in your nation, those primary gods of your nation and do the divorce decree. Go into the court of divorce and sever yourself from many and gad, the sun god, the moon god, Leviathan, and any of their names in your nations. Oh, Jesus, help us. Then you need to go into the court of cancellation and cancel those. Um, oh. Cancel the. Oh, come on. Cancel the um, curses that were loosed against your family by those dedications to darkness and by your ungodly elders. When you're in the court of divorce, divorce yourself from the ungodly elders that dedicated your family line to darkness. It's very important that you recognize that these dedications hold you in a place of captivity. You have to see them for what they are. It's the same dedications that were done by the Freemasons. It's these dedications. And in these dedications, they dedicated their seed. They literally, they had these sexual, there was always sex acts, there was sodomy, there was orgies, there was all of this horrible filth. And in the doing of that, they were giving their seed, they were giving, they were dedicating their womb to these demon gods, these fallen sons of God. And we have to understand we came forth out of the womb of that family and there has to be a real divorcing and then cancellation and in and cancellation of every gifting of every inheritance that came through that dedication with these dedications they put specific curses that would defeat your destiny and would defeat the wealth and your favor on your life there were specific acts. There were specific, you know, that you would be the scum of the earth, that you would be harassed. I mean, when we were in England, we went to Bath. And Bath is built on a temple to a goddess. And it was first a Druid goddess and then a Roman goddess. And the, the sacrificial tables were in this temple. We saw them. And then they had found in this um, spring that came out of the ground, 
they found all these lead curses. And I'm going to tell you, the curses that were put on people, they were blood-curdling curses on them and their seed. Now, a curse with, cannot stand, cannot come without cause. So it's not that we have to be afraid of curses, but we have to find if we're operating in something and something is besetting our life. And by besetting our life, I mean literally besetting. It's an ongoing, continuous pattern that doesn't change. Then you have to pray and fast and ask the Lord to go to the root of it. And many times we talk about that getting free is a... Um, peeling an onion. We've got to get to the core of the onion. We've got to get to the core of the onion. And if we don't get to the core of the onion, we just keep on going around that mountain and we don't understand. We don't understand. So I want between now and Monday, and it's, you know, we're going to have Resurrection Sunday. We're going to really, really do whatever work the Lord shows us to do tomorrow. Tomorrow is, to me, is the most holy of days when I focus on the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. So I want you to really look at this. Like I said, court of divorce. Divorce yourself from every dedication. See it as a divorce. Go in there and say on the basis of my, you know, and when we go into these courts, you're going to do it on the basis of your testimony. You're doing it on the basis of your dedication, your submission to the Lordship of Jesus Christ on the basis that you're a new creation, on the basis that you've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of the Son of Love, that these binding um, dedications, they were dealt with in Colossians 2.14. They were nailed to the cross they're finished, but you go into that court of divorce and you deal with it there. Then you go into the court of cancellation and you cancel every curse that is coming down your bloodline because of what they did. Now they did it out of ignorance. They did it out of the desire for wealth and pr prosperity. They did it when they were going to war. They did it when they were having great, great um, natural disasters, famine, all of these things would come. And it's in all of us. It controls all of us. But we have the ability to break it. When you're done, go in to the court of title, deed, and ownership and decree that you are. Their, their, their claims of ownership, they're canceled. They have no claim. It has been paid in full by the blood of Jesus Christ. You can do this. It is not difficult. And then you go into the court of time and season and you ask for the restoration of the timeline of your life to where it's supposed to be. Where it's supposed to be in him, according to the books of heaven. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, any questions? Please raise your hands. If you have questions. Okay. Angela, okay. Um, I guess this shows my ignorance. How do I find out the gods of the United States of America? I know I could say sports and all these, but no, 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 no. I, you're, know, you're... I know it's not that. But yeah. How do you find you are out? probably Mexican, right? No, Hispanic. Well, Hispanic from where? Spain. Okay. Then you look, if you look at the Iberian Peninsula, the Phoenicians settled the Iberian Peninsula. Those would be the gods that you would look at. Thank you. Okay. The, um, each of us come from some place. Each of us in our DNA. That's why I tell people to get their DNA done so we know where we come from. Now, Dan and I did a, we prayer walked the Iberian Peninsula because I had, we both had Iberian in our DNA. Found out later that we had lots of Portuguese. My mother's 26% Portuguese. Okay. 
Any other questions? Janice, OK. Um, Janice and Emmy. Sorry, I keep asking questions or, no. you know, having something to say. Um, my question is, or should I say it's a wondering is, you know, I'm coming back to because of a dream I had this morning. Um, you know, I all these years, yes, it's clear when you see trading flaws of evil, it's it's clear to identify trading flaws of evil. Should we also be divorcing ourselves, which is what God had me doing this morning anyway, divorcing ourselves from trading flaws, you know, from or trading or evil transactions or trades were unknowingly done or knowingly done in the house of God and the temples of God and all those things, the sanctuaries. Can we include that as well? Of course, because many of the temples of God, the houses of God, were polluted. We know the Catholic Church was polluted by Constantinople. We know that even the design of the cathedrals was set up as the same as a Roman temple. We know changing the day of worship to Sunday was to worship the sun God. We know that they began to persecute those who followed the Sabbath, those who followed the feasts. In my own personal walk, I have done much work regarding that. Because I come out of, a, my father is a very, very strong Roman Catholic. And so was would, would have been my mother and different. Because all of us come out of our families, if they were Christian, if they were European, up until like the 10th century, they would have been Catholic, most of them. So yes, I remember going through a severing and a divorcing myself from everything in the Catholic Church except the Holy Eucharist. That was the only thing he allowed me to hold on to. Now, I gained much in that church. I learned reverence. I learned how to tuck myself into God, and I can worship in any place I go to because I just tuck in. So yes, Janice, and especially in Africa, I saw it in Haiti. In Haiti, we went... To there were very few churches that were not polluted, that we did not see manifestation of great wickedness. I met only one or two pastors that did, were not polluted majorly, and they had no idea. So if you're led by a polluted pastor, they're going to bring in what's in them, because whatever's on the pastor comes down to you. Okay, peace. And Mirembe? I didn't know my arm was up. Yeah, you it know. was. Okay. Uh, now, uh, as I pray, should I pray? Should I repent for the wall of Africa? Because nope. we have. No. Nope. Okay. You are only with what we're doing today is we're dealing with those dedications. Now, those every one of those dedications are a trading floor. That trade that's made, that's a trading floor that's made with that God and with that family. Basically, I will give you a human sacrifice. I will even give you a child, one of my children, Whoa. for wealth, for power, for the robbing of destiny, for me to have that which was never intended for me. That's what you're dealing with. You're divorcing yourselves from those trading floors. Okay. And the consequences of those trading floors, because once you stop worshiping that God, once you stop giving worship, that God still demands worship. Okay. So in villages in Africa, when they've given human sacrifices in families every year, there will be a child that dies. There will be a miscarriage. There will be sudden accidents. There will be sudden destructions and illnesses. A, a person will be taken from their family, but it's it's more extended now. It's more it's it's an extended family, so it's not as seen. So we have to understand this. We must divorce ourselves from those altars. We must divorce ourselves from the consequences of those altars, because that. God is still coming to the family demanding worship. Now, 
The Lord taught me this when he was teaching me about the Aztecs. And he asked me two, two questions. And he said, tell me about the worship of the Aztecs. I said, it was human blood. They believe that for the sun to shine every day, blood must be spilt. And they had high, sac high holy days, unholy days, in which thousands of people would be sacrificed. The Mayans were the same. The Incas were the same. They required tribute from the Mexican tribes round about. And if they did not give tribute, they went and they would destroy the tribe. They had temple prostitutes, sexual immorality. They used drugs and drums and chanting to enter the spirit realm. Then he said, what are the besetting sins of Mexico? Bloodshed of the innocent. Because they took the best. They took the utter best. They took the most beautiful. They took the, the smartest. They took, if you had were playing a game of soccer, the winning team died. Who would play? Who would win? Who would want to win? They have such sexual immorality. And they have such drug drugs. And I read just yesterday that they are teaching children in California and LA chants to the Aztec gods. They still want worship. And if you go to the drug dealers, the drug, the big drug cartel, they have tattooed on their chests, on their bodies, the images of those sun gods. They're still serving them. And that's why the drug cartels are so powerful because they are still serving those gods. And we will not defeat the drug cartels. We will not defeat what is happening in our nations unless we recognize the root and the source of it. Okay? So that's what we have to, that's why Marissa has been spending two, almost three years doing this to get herself free. Okay, did that answer the question? Hey, Emmy, we are not doing, um, this is personal. This is family. This is not for our nation. This is for our bloodline and all who are in our bloodline. Please do not take it beyond there. Okay, Janelle. You're not undone yet. I know you have questions. You can't be sitting there and not having questions. Okay. Emmy. Am, uh, I, am I unmuted yet? You are now. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Well, I'm having a real struggle because I don't know quite how to say this and still give honor to where I want to give honor. I want to be very careful. But I was my first contact with the supernatural world was through the word of faith movement and i really want to honor kenneth hagan kenneth copeland and some of those big teachers they set me at a very good foundational level i learned to confess the word i learned to hang on to it i saw it work miracles in my life and then soon afterward i began to question why this and this wasn't working and i got into john sanford's book uh, the transformation of the inner man and i got into inner healing and as i began to present that to different people in the word of faith movement oh they threw up their hands in horror no no you don't need that it's already done mm -hmm. and so i still today have friends that are calling me and say this is a bunch of bunkum you're saying about generational sin it's already been paid and i have a feeling that i am to divorce myself from the word of faith movement, but I, I want to honor it. So how? Well, I'm, I'm you would concerned. divorce yourself from the false teachings. Yeah. It's the false teachings. It's not the word of faith. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. honor the word of faith, but I ran into the exact same thing, Janelle. Oh, did you? Okay. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. You think <laughs> I can remember going to my pastor and saying, I need to go into counseling because of some things the Lord was revealing to me. 
And I was a leader in the church and I was removed mm -hmm. from leadership because I went into counseling. Oh. And the pastor's wife turned to me and said, and it was the Lord showed me a spirit of illegitimacy on my, on my family. Mm -hmm. and, and the pastor's wife said to me, if you have to deal with that, does that mean I have to deal with my father's suicide? Mm. And I looked at her and I said, yes. So I never again, I was a leader in that church for three, four years. I never again ministered in that church. I never again had a voice. Mm. So I understood that new creation. But the new creation has to be balanced with the other scripture that says we walk out yes. of salvation with fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am a new creation in my spirit. Jesus Christ comes to live in my spirit, but he mm -hmm. doesn't have control of my soul or my body. Amen. Okay, thank you, Janelle. I would divorce from false teachings, just okay. like when I divorced myself for the, from the false teachings in the Catholic Church. You can't okay. divorce yourself from the Catholic Church completely because it's the root from what the body of Christ comes from. Mm -hmm. But there's a tree up in the mountains and it's on the Blue Ridge Parkway. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite image. And to me, it is a symbol of us. It is this very strong tree that the very core mm -hmm. of it is rotten mm -hmm. and has been struck by lightning and you can literally walk into the tree. Mm -hmm. But around it, there is a living tree, and these roots go deep, okay, into the earth, mm -hmm. and that's an image of us having to be cleansed from that center, which is rotten, but which God is still building a mighty oak of righteousness, mm -hmm. and it's going to be perfect, and it's going to be beautiful, but that's how we look, and God's got to go in with his lightnings and remove that rotten core. That the enemy mm -hmm. has established in us. Okay, thank I, you. Oh, I'm Miss Jackie. Um, I priest has got her hand up, so I'm going to do her first. Okay. Okay. Um, so just going back to the question that Angela started to ask. So I understand that we need to identify the the nations in our bloodline, but where do we find good resources to identify the gods that operated in those nations? You, you just have to look at your DNA. You, all you do is you look up, what are the gods of Germany? What are the gods of the Germanic tribes? What are the, jo the Druid gods? Any with the English blood, you're dealing with Druidism. Okay. okay. You, if you're dealing, to Italy is easy, that's Roman. Greece is easy, okay? So it's just what your tribal group is. Like Rita being Scandinavian, they had the, the gods of the Nord Norse gods which were very similar to the German gods. So, okay. okay. So it's it's not that difficult to look at, Teresa. It really okay. is. That's why I sent out that paper from um, Chinwi. She had done the, um, the sun god names in the different nationalities, okay? It's very important. Anybody who's India, they know their gods. They, they, they know the gods. Um, all right, peace. Marembe, are you still wanting to speak? No, I don't know what is happening. <laughs> Your hand it's still keeps on going up. Okay. Um, it's Emmy, Jackie. It's Emmy. It's different. It's Emmy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Her hand just keeps on going up. Okay, I'll ignore it. Okay, no, Brenda. Emmy. Oh, I was going to, um, sorry, address what uh, Janelle was saying about. There's peace. I, I know. Oh. And she has a question. No, she doesn't, because I keep on lowering her hand and asking her. No, you're asking Marimbi. Okay. No, I, I don't. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The other, Emmy. Emmy, you have a question? Thank you, Mama Jackie. Thank you so much for this teaching and your guidance and your leadership. Thank you. I have noted where which courts we need to go into this weekend. And one of them um, is the Court of Title Deeds and Ownership, you say? Right. Um, and I wondered, do we at any point go into the court of decrees? I guess I'm looking for clarification of when to go to the court of decrees and when not to. Well, this, there's no reason to go to a court of decree in this. Okay. This is not a place of decree. In the courts is where you give your scripture. Now, Understood. it's extremely important that when you're going into court, have your scriptures ready. 
Mm -hmm. It's going to be based on Ephesians. No, not on Ephesians. Let's see. You're, you're going to base much on the Colossians 14. You're going to base it on the cross. You're going to base it on Isaiah 53. Mm -hmm. You're going to base it on being a new creation in Christ. So you go in and you, every time we go into something like this, when we go into court, you literally are going to call your ancestors into court, all the godly and the ungodly in court. Because God can go down and bring him in up out of out of hell, literally. Okay. And you're going to call them into court, and you're going to ask for all the prayers and the testimonies of righteousness in your generational line to be presented in the court. Also, all the suffering, all the sufferings in your family that have, that have happened because of these dedications of the ungodly elders in your family. The mm -hmm. ungodly elders are the ones that set it in motion. So you're going to acknowledge that your ungodly elders did this and you can do this through the divorce decree. Thank you. Out of the book, okay? Yeah. And make certain when you're doing any of the prayers in the book, you must springboard as the Holy Spirit brings it to mind. Yes, I don't I don't just go straight is the Holy Spirit quicken something in my spirit in my mind a thought comes I follow that until it's completed. Thank you. So you follow the Holy Spirit you depend on the Holy Spirit. And you ask for the seven spirits of God to help you the spirit of mm -hmm. the spirit of the Lord with the spirit of wisdom and understanding counsel and might knowledge and the fear of the Lord so you go in with the awe and fear of the just judge knowing but you know that Jesus Christ is your advocate. He's paid the mm -hmm. price. So you come in and it's with, it's with that knowledge and that understanding because my forefathers, because of the ungodly elders in my bloodline, because they made these dedications to these mm -hmm. gods, because they dedicated their, the womb and the seed to these gods. There has been such death and destruction that has followed our family especially since we became Christian, especially since we accepted Jesus Christ. Because all those demons, all those demons in hell are saying we must drive them back to the old ways. We're not going to allow them to see any fruit, any blessing. They're going to struggle all the days of their life because this is the curse they put upon the family, that they will not be able to receive blessings. If they're not worshiping it, those gods. And so we divorce ourselves from those dedications and everything that were done in the dedications. Whatever profane way they made these dedications with blood, with semen, whatever they did, whatever they did. And the Holy Spirit will show you. Yes. The Holy Spirit will show you. I mean, the Druids, they had human sacrifices. I was talking to uh, Marissa about the fact, the number of women, and it's on this call, the number of African women, the number of Spanish women that are not wed, godly women, that have not found husbands or do not have children. Mm -hmm. And what she told me that she's been studying this, she did some research on it while she was here, that the Mayans would purposely slaughter pregnant women. They would literally remove the babies from the mothers. They would disembowel them. It's, they did it by the thousands. I know they purposely did this in Naga land between the tribes because when you kill a woman, and you kill the baby in the womb, you are cutting off the future. Yes. So these are some of the things they did. So we, we have to divorce ourselves from that if we're going to have any victory. But divorce yourself from the ungodly elders. Divorce themselves from every trade they made on that lineage, on that family. Divorce yourself from this lineage, this tree, and say, oh, no. 
<laughs> and for me and my house and those of my bloodline that are serving the Lord, we are divorced from this completely. See, the divorce is an utter cutting off. And you'll base it on Colossians 2.14. Having canceled and blotted out and wiped away the handwriting of the note or the bond with its legal decrees and demands which has stood in force against us, hostile to us. Those dedications were written in the books of hell, in your family book in hell. Literally, that's where they are noted. It's not in the books of heaven. Mm -hmm. It's in the books of hell. Where it's written in blood. It's written in blood. And we have to understand that at the cross of Jesus Christ, these this is written legal decrees that stand against us have been canceled, have been blotted, have been obliterated, have been annihilated. And this is what you're going to stand in the court and say. This scripture, this note with all its regulations, its decrees and demands, it's the demand for service. It's the demand for worship. It's the demand for blood sacrifice. It's the demand to continue to continue the worship of these fallen sons of God that are the profane worship of our ancestors. Because he cleared these, he set it aside and he cleared it completely out of our way, out of our way. Our way is our path, our journey, our life by nailing it to his cross. God, God, at this point in time, he disarmed those principalities and powers that were ranged against us, ranged against each of us, each of our families, these principalities and powers have been ranged. They've been standing against us. They've been at war with us. And he made a bold display and public example of them, triumphing in them, in him, and in at the cross. Now, if, we, if you don't have this scripture, deeply embedded into your heart. You've got to see it when you go into that court of divorce. Mm -hmm. You're going to speak it. Yes. You're going to speak it for your family. You're going to divorce yourself from those ungodly elders. And in that court, do Psalm 45, verses 10, where it says, daughter, consider, submit, consent. So you got to consider this. Each one of you have to consider this. You have to submit. Submit means you come under this instruction. Consent means that with everything in your heart, you say yes, body, soul, and spirit. Yes. Daughter, forget your people. Forget your people in your father's house. If you don't forget your people in your father's house, you're going to stay in bondage. Yes, Rita? Um, is Baphomet the same as Baal? Yes, um, I'm also wondering, your voice is cutting out every so often. Is that happening to other people or is it just my computer, my internet? I don't know. No, they're not having trouble. Christine, no, I'm not having trouble. It's clear. Okay. Okay. All right. Jackie? Yes, Christine. Quick question. Uh, because I'm Filipino, so we're not looking that God just specific. I don't want to go off on a tangent. I want to make sure I get your instruction. I'm only looking for my country, right? No, you would be looking, you have Spanish blood, so you would do Iberian Peninsula, which is Phoenicians. Oh, my. And you would do whatever the animistic gods, because you've got native. Filipino, right? Of Indian? Okay, you yes. got what the gods of Philippines are and the Phoenicians coming out of. And it'd also be Rome because the Romans ruled um, the Iberian Peninsula, Spain. Okay, Janice? I have a question. I just asked him for clarification on, okay, you divorced the, for example, you divorced the ungodly elders and all the dedications, everything they did and all those trades that they did, evil trade on um, evil trade, um, altars and all of that, or trading floors. My question is, you said something about the consequences of not 
worshipping or meeting the demands of those um, gods. So that we, do you saying we divorce ourselves from that as well? We, we include it in, in our petition. You go into the court of cancellation. Okay. And there you cancel all the consequences that have been loosed against your family, all the curses, because you have not continued in this worship. Okay. 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 When, and then the other. In these courts, I want you to understand, you stand the same. Everyone you've called in stands the same. It's, it's almost like a carousel and it just turns and you're suddenly in this other court and it turns again and you'll be in the court of ownership and title deeds. It's not like you have to step out and step in or do anything else. It's very simple. Yes, yes. I remember you asking us to do it in November too. So I was going through it, asking us to do it. Yeah, but I'm not sure if we included, uh, when we did it, if we included <laughs> divorcing ourselves from the consequences of the worship and all that, the curses of that. And all, no, we did it, the cost of consolation, but I'm not sure of the consequences. So that's why I was trying to clear get Kelly for to know what I'm going to be doing um, in again, you know, this time. I think what, what happens, and I think it might be happening with a lot of you today, is the reality of the control that this has had on your family becomes very clear. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, it's becoming it's, clearer and clearer. It, it's the reality. And it's also the faith that you bring into that courtroom. Do you truly believe? Second Colossians, Colossians 2, 14. Do you truly believe that? Do you truly believe you've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the king of son of God? Do you truly believe that you can step into the father's house and forget your family, forget your people, and forget your family. As long as you have your identity in your people and in your father's house, you will never know victory. So when you're done with all of this, if you wanna to go to the court of decree and do it at the court of decree, do Psalm 4510 in the court of decree. Step into that court of decree and make that decree. I. It says, daughter, consider consent, submit, forget your people and your father's house, and then the king will delight in you. Now that means, and you say, and they court a decree, this day I choose to forget my people and my father's house. That means I forget who I was in the natural. My identity is no longer with my tribe. My identity is no longer with my nation. My identity is only as a daughter of the Most High God, as a son of the Most High God. If you still are seeing yourself in the oppression, in all of the, the backlash of being what it means to be a daughter or a son in your family, then you have to understand it is a literal stepping out and stepping in. So you can do that in the court of decree. You can step out of your family. You can step out of your identity. Now, I know who I am. I know from where I come. That's, that's not forgotten. But my identity is, in, is a daughter of the Most High God. My identity mm -hmm. is not that I'm Irish. My identity is not that I'm American. My identity is not even that I'm a woman. No, I am. <laughs> But my primary identity is, is a daughter of the Most High God. And then in Isaiah 54, the Lord of hosts is our husband. It's my, part of my identity is I am the wife of the Lord Sabiath, Jehovah Sabiath. Who will dare mess with the wife of, the, of Jehovah Sabiath? These things have to be real inside of you if you're going to ever step into the authority that God wants you to have. Mm -hmm. Okay, Janelle. It you were ba based on Janice's request for clarification. I think one of the reasons why was well, for me why this is feeling like well we've already done this. It seems familiar, but the difference with me is it's going deeper from the soul level, the mental level, the emotions, the will, and all that. It's going now deep because I've opened up my spirit to the Lord. And Holy Spirit is now making this so real 
that it seems almost like a different, like, why are we doing this again? No, it's not that you're doing it again. You're doing it in a, from a different place. At least that's the way I'm looking at it. Right. Well, it's peeling the onion. We can own, mm -hmm. it's the revelation we have as we do it. Mm -hmm. Everything, it's a spirit of revelation. Now, when we did yesterday, we did all that repentance for Gad, for the God of the destiny, stealing of destinies. That was something we had never done. That was the worship of Gad, mm. worship of many. So it's important. We, we're looking at these things. We're going mm. deeper and deeper. Mm -hmm. I have done the profane worship, I bet, a hundred times. And every time I do it, I feel strengthened in it. Because how many different bloodlines do we have in us? We got all of these different, we got, and it goes out and we are touching nations. The depth of our repentance touches nations and tribes. I was told by a woman, she prophesied over me in, when I was out in California and just beginning this work. And she said, I see your family tree and it's covered in light. It means out to the very branches, the light of God just penetrating because this is what's keeping people in captivity this is what's holding them in captivity and then she said you're going to be teaching in ireland you're going to be in ireland and there'll be people in the congregation who have been saved because of the work you've done for the family this is not about us we must always know that this is a very deep form of in intercession. Because when you go into these courts, you're doing it on behalf of everyone that is in your bloodline by birth, marriage, and adoption. Everyone. You're standing there as a representative of the court for freedom. This is part of the great end time harvest. Oh my God, this is part of the great preparing for the great end time harvest for the people, the people of our nations, the people of our tribes. So I have never seen this so much about myself, yet I was suffering consequences of the, like when I had, when I had to go and repent for that Druid priest in my bloodline, I had to see it. I had to see what he did. I had to repent for it. It was very specific. And only then was I healed, my back healed. That was a consequence that I had no idea. I had done profane worship, but I was not. Remember the enemy is a legalist. Please remember he's a legalist. And if he can find a little thing where we didn't quite do it right. And I also know that the grace of Jesus Christ covers us. Praise God, he covers us and he keeps us. I'm going to tell each one of you that you've been called to this grace corps. God has given us an assignment and it's an assignment for your families. It's an assignment for your nations. And those who choose to accept this assignment, it's work. It is work in the spirit to set people and nations free. And just as you step out of the identity of the poverty, of the corruption of your people group, of your father's house, of the people that you come from. As you step out as a representative, call for those in your bloodline to step out and step into their identity in Christ. Do this about everyone, please. Any questions? Rita? Any questions, please? I just have a comment. Yes. Um, thank you, thank you, and thank God for this opportunity. I'm so kind of dazed, you know, and so amazed, you know. Um, this, uh, it's, I'm so just overwhelmed with the kindness and the goodness of God. Thank and um, thank you for accepting the call. I'm paying the price, you know, you and Papa Dan, thank you for accepting that call. You know, that has really, really, um, really, you know, been very helpful. 
So now I, it's so clear to me, you know, I don't mind how many times we do this. I don't mind because I understand it's like layer and layer. You have to keep, you know, going deeper and deeper. So now we're going to the next deeper level. <laughs> so I'm so grateful. I am so grateful to God. I am so, so grateful for it. What we're going to do today, we're still going to step into his, through his gates with thanksgiving and in his courts of praise. And then we're going to take our covenant meal with such gratitude for the cross of Jesus Christ. Angela, before we do, do you have something to say? Yes, I listed an, the order on the chat and I wanted to know if that was correct. I'll, I don't have chat up, let me look. Uh, also don't forget that Brenda had a question sometime back. Okay, the, the court of time and season is after the court of deed of of title deed and ownership because that's when you're setting everything in place and then at, at the very end will be um the court of decree where you can do that wonderful um stepping into the father's house stepping out of your family forget your people in your father's house when mm -hmm. we did this in india we had prayed over these um orphan boys and they were, they had been in this house and we had gone there specifically. We prayed over many, many orphans when we were in Nagpur and we stood all the boys up and I anointed them with the father's love. And then I had them literally, they were sons of women prostitutes. They were just, it was really quite remarkable. And I had them take a step out of their, forget your people in your father's house. And I had them step forward one young man, he was probably about 10 years old, was literally picked up in the spirit and thrown across the room. Afterwards, we found out that he was not saved and that spirit was not gonna let him step into that house. He had no right to step in. Mm. He was saved that morning. He got mm. saved. So this is very, very powerful. When you go to the court of decree, do it on behalf of your family. Mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to lose our identities our identity and brokenness, all of it. We have to lose that identity. Okay, Brenda, do you have something to say? Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> okay, Janice, your hand is up again. Yes, yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. Please forgive me. <laughs> no, there's not, nothing to forgive. This is too important. Yeah, um, so we're going to do that divorcing ourselves from our families, you know, in the court of degree. Decree. Can we do it for our children as well? I would have, if your children understand, I would have them participate. Awesome. Okay. And one of what if some of them are not with me right now? Of course. It's all remember, it's everyone in your bloodline by blood marriage and adoption. Okay. Okay. So I can do it for all of my children, my bloodlines, and my family. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. You're you're like the tip of the spear for the freedom and deliverance of your family. See Amen. You You're the tip of the spear. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? <clears throat> um, I never expected this to be like this today. I wept so as I was, you know, going into this, the council of the, of God, I was weeping. So, but I feel so responsible for you. And wanting you, you to step into who you are, step into your destiny, step into the fullness of what God has called you to be and do. And so out of that responsibility, especially having that young woman come on, Shalini, it was like, no, I can't, I can't be responsible for anything happening to you. You know, and then it's up to you to do it. It's up to you to do it. Okay. Um, let's see. We're going to step into the courts with Thanksgiving. Who feels a great Thanksgiving in their heart? Raise your hand. Well, I do. And into the courts with praise. Um, Emmy, do you feel? Emmy? I do, thank you, Mama Okay. Okay. 
So you're going to step in with Thanksgiving, Emmy? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Oh. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you. We thank you, Father God. We just thank you that we're alive. We thank you for leading us to where we are right now. We thank you, Father God, that in spite of how much we have felt unsafe in, in the churches, Father God, you had preordained for us to be here on this day. You had preordained for Mama Jackie and Papa Dan to, to be called to this ministry. You had preordained for them to set up God's foundation builders. Father, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Father, for your love. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your steadfastness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for our families. Thank you for our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren. Thank you, Father God, for the journey that you have brought us through, Father God. I know that we are still peeling the onion, but Father, we have come a long way. Yes. And you had intended all this. We have come a long way. And I know that you will not leave us, nor yes. forsake us. So we thank you for holding on to us. Yes. Father, you see all the things that are troubling us individually, collectively, our, fa our, our families, every individual. And it might look like there is no solution, but Father, you are our shield. Thank you for being our shield. Thank you for being our defense. Thank you for being an advocate. Thank you for being our lawyer. Thank you for being our helper. Thank you for always restoring us to glory. Yes. yes. Father, thank you for saving us out of this thing, out of everything that is not like you. Thank you for, for purging out of us everything that is not like you. Thank you for removing everything in us and in our families that is contrary to your character and nature. Thank you for lifting our heads back up and restoring us to our, places of authority, our place of authority. Thank you, Father, that you are a shield and we know that you will protect us yes. and you will defend us every single day, every moment of the day. Thank you that you advocate for us today so that we can solve this issue, Father. These issues have been long ongoing for centuries, Father God, but we thank you for choosing us. We thank you that all we have to do is rest in you and watch yes. you move. Yes. Thank you, Father, that you are our Father. And we thank you that, Lord, you give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. Thank you, Lord, that you open our eyes to see, that you open our ears to hear, that you give us hearts of understanding. Thank you yes. for, uh, for, for, for understanding and enlightenment. Thank you for filling us with your hope. Thank you for helping us to walk yes. in your calling. Every second of our lives, Father, thank you for helping to us to walk in your calling. Even with all the obstacles, thank you that we are alive. Yes. Thank you, Father God, that we will know the riches of your glory. Thank yes. you, Father God that you have made us part of your inheritance. Thank you, Father God, <laughs> that we can walk in you in the richness that you desire for us in every area of our lives. Yes. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father God. Your word says that you will instruct us and teach us in the way we should go. So we thank you that you are guiding us here today with your eye. Thank you for instructing us. Thank you for teaching us today. Thank you for showing us where to go. Thank you for showing us what to do. Thank yeah. you for giving us words that we need to say what we need to say. Thank you that even if we don't know how to handle things, Lord, we know that we will that the, the, the things that we will encounter today and over the weekend, Father, we know that your help is nearby. That every time we cry out, Father God, you hear us. We, every time we cry out, Father God, you bring us fresh bread. Yes, Lord. Father, thank you for guiding us with your eye. Thank you for keeping us in your perfect path at all times. Oh. Father, you put our children and on my heart today. Ah, Father, thank you. Thank you for your promise to educate, to teach and disciple our children yourself so that our children, Father God, will, 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 will enjoy your shalom peace. Amen. Thank you that you bring our children into perfect wholeness. Thank you that you bring our children into perfect unity with yourself. Thank you for your perfect healing. Thank you for the perfect victory through Jesus Christ that our children have, Father God. Yes. Father, you are the only person who can reach deep into us and our children's heart and hearts and heal us. Yes, Father, you're the only one who can cause all of us to make the right choices. 
Yes. Thank you, Father, that you are the only one who can turn hearts of kings like water. Turn and, and, and therefore turning rebellious heart of a child is easy for you to do. So thank you for that. Yes. Thank you that you're the only person who can, who can walk and talk with us and our children every moment of Amen. every day. Amen. Thank you, Father, that you are with our children always, even to the end of this world. Thank you, Father, that you're the only one who truly knows our children intimately as you do us. Thank you, Father God, that you, you're the only one who loves our children more than we ever could. Thank you, Father, that for your goodness that brings every one of us, including our children, to repentance. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Father, for your healing. We thank you, Father, in advance for your healing. We thank you in advance for your deliverance. We thank you, Father God, for changing all of our hearts. We thank you, Father God, for reaching into broken places and comforting us and our children everywhere we hurt. Mm. Father, we thank you that when you disciple us, sin has no chance. Amen. We thank you that you yourself will bring glory and healing and shalom into every life that is represented here and, and every one of their members of their families because Jesus died on the cross to give us this life. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, El Shaddai. Thank you, Yeshua HaMashiach, in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I thank you for the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. I thank you that in his death, we have left. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for the resurrection. I thank you for our resurrection out of the tombs of death that we have been placed in, like Lazarus. I thank you for the call that will come forth from Jesus that says our name. He calls us by name and says, come forth. I thank you that he cries out to Marembe and he says, come forth, Marembe, come forth, Christina, come forth, Rita, come forth, Sharon, come forth, Christina, come forth, Joe, Sonia, come forth, Gloria, come forth, Nancy, come forth, Brenda, come forth, Rapramud, come forth, Janelle, come forth, Kim, come forth, Angela, come forth, Janice, come forth, Emmy, come forth, Teresa. Come forth, come forth. Death will not hold you in its grip any longer. Come forth. We thank you for the cry, the cry of Jesus Christ as he speaks to us to come forth. And that this resurrection weekend will be a time of coming forth. I thank you. I thank you for the power of the blood. I thank you for the cross. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for everything Jesus Christ did. I thank you. I thank you that he was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. I thank you that he understands all of our sorrows and all of our griefs. I thank you, Father, that he was not... Oh, oh I thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. He was not handsome. He was just a normal man. Nothing that we should be drawn to him. I thank you for that, Father, because we're just ordinary people. We're just ordinary people. We're not part of the 1% of the absolute beautiful and gorgeous of the earth. And we thank you, Father, that we're just ordinary like he was. We thank you that he understands what it means to be rejected and despised of men. We thank you for that, Father. On behalf of all the despised and the rejected, on behalf of all the ordinary, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you that he was a man of pain and acquainted with grief. I thank you, Father, that he understands pain spiritual pain, emotional pain, physical pain. He's a man of pain. He was one who was despised and he had no value. Father, for all the people who have no value in the earth, for all those, I thank you that he came for all of those, the poor, the rejected, 
the destitute, the oppressed, the downtrodden. He came for all. I thank you, Lord. All those who are not deemed as valuable in the eyes of the world. He came for us all. I thank you. I thank you that he bore our diseases and our pains. He suffered. He bore it all. I thank you for what he did. I thank you that he bore he bore our sins. He was pierced for our transgressions. And he was crushed. He was crushed by our iniquities. Father, what we're dealing with is the iniquities, Father. We're going to the very, very root. We're going to the very, very root. We're going to the rotten core in the midst of the heart of mankind, in the midst of the spirit of mankind. We're going to the rotten core, Father. And he was crushed. He was crushed for the iniquities. And I'm so grateful. I am so grateful that he, he was crushed. He went to the very DNA. I thank you, Father. And the chastisement, he bore the chastisement so we could have peace of mind. I'm so grateful. I'm grateful that I can have peace of mind. I'm so grateful that I can enter into your rest because I have peace of mind. I have peace with you. I've made my peace. And he made it possible for me to make my peace. I'm so grateful, Father, that he was silent. I am so grateful that he was silent so we could speak the word of God. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful for his silence. I'm so grateful for his silence on the cross so we could speak. I thank you, Lord. I am grateful that he bore the crimes of the people. I'm grateful that he accepted the stroke. That stroke of death, he took the stroke of punishment. He took the stroke. I'm so grateful that he took that stroke. All of us were destined for hell. All of us were separated from the life of God. All of us were facing this deep chasm between the father and his children. And he became the bridge. He made a bridge for us he, because he accepted the stroke too. Someone had to be punished and he accepted the stroke too for all mankind. I'm so grateful. I'm grateful that he's my guilt offering and I don't have to walk in guilt and shame. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that I am the fruit of his travail. I am so grateful. I can never praise you enough or be thankful enough for what you've done for us. Never, never, ever can I ever pour out the depths of my thanksgiving, the depths of my love for you because of what you did. Not only for me, Father, but for all men and women. Everything that Jesus did. So I am grateful. I'm grateful for Gethsemane and the crucifixion of his will so that we could submit our will to the will of God. I am grateful. I am grateful. Okay, Pramud, you begin the praise. Father God, we thank you and appreciate you, God, and we worship you. We all here who are here, oh God, we come in one accord, according to Romans 12, 1, as living sacrifices. Lord, we, we understand that, Lord, you want us to be living sacrifices, and we all come as living sacrifices to you, Lord, so that we can do Lord, your perfect will. We worship and adore you, O God. You are our God who is blessed. And Lord God, you are 
full of mercy and compassion and comfort. We worship you for your mercies. We worship and adore you, Lord. We exalt your name high. We raise your name, O God. Oh, hallelujah to your name, O Father God. Because you are faithful to us. You are merciful to us. You are compassionate. You are loving. You are overflowing with compassion for us, O God. It is for the mercy, your mercy sake, Lord, that we are celebrating the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. We worship you. We adore you, Lord. We say Hosanna in the highest. That Lord, you gave your only son, Jesus Christ, as a sacrifice to us all. And we worship and adore you, God. You are God, Al Shaddai, Al Shaddai, Al Shaddai, the all sufficient God. Lord, that is, we don't need anything more than you, O oh God. We need you more. We need you more, O oh God. You are Al Shaddai. You are God, Elohim. You are our God, O oh Father, who is seated on high, who is still in control, who reigns, who is controlling everything and orchestrating, O oh God. We worship you. We worship you. You are a God who knows the ending before the beginning, O oh God. Oh, we worship you. We say hallelujah to your name. Lord, you are our God. God Ori. Yehovah Ori. The Lord, our light. The light which removes darkness. The light which brings enlightenment. But it is you we worship that Lord you have given the spirit of renewing in us. You are enlightening our eyes, O oh God. You are enlightening our inner eyes. You are opening our ears. We adore you. So we say hallelujah to your name. It is your great compassion and love for all humankind. Lord, we worship you. You are El, El Elyon, the God most high. You are Yehovah Gibeor, the mighty God. You are mighty, mighty, mighty. You are the powerful God who stands in strength. You are Yehovah Sibod, the angel, the commander in chief of angel armies. Lord, the battle belongs to you. And we stand in Christ, O oh God, in victory. Lord, we fight this battle in victory because. You, it is the battle belongs to you, and you are fighting the battle, O oh God. Lord, we worship and adore you. We say hallelujah to your name. You are Yehovah Rah, our shepherd. Yes, God, you shepherd us. You take care of us. You, you take us to still waters. You, you, you help us, O oh Lord, to graze in green pastures. You provide for our needs. And forever and ever, Lord, your covenant is for generations. We worship you. It's not a matter of one or two days, but of generations. Time and eternity, you are our God. We worship you, O Father God. You are Yehovah, Makadesh, the Lord, our sanctifier. Yes, Lord, you separated us. You consecrated us. And Lord, you are purifying us like purifying silver and sanctifying us through the blood of Yahushua Hamashiach. As Lord, you have said that we are the ones who are enforcing body of Christ according to Psalm 149. Lord, we apply that blood of Christ which sanctifies us because you are our God, Yahweh Makadesh, the God our sanctifier sanctifying us. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. We say hallelujah to your name. You are Yehovah. Nisi, the God of our banner. You are moving ahead and we march behind you, O God. You are the banner of our victory. You are the banner of our deliverances. Lord, we worship you. We say hallelujah to your name. That, Lord, you gave that revelation to us that we can come in your courts and remove all curses and be delivered. 
it is your mercy it is your kindness o oh god we say hallelujah to your name hosanna in the highest holy 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 yes lord you are holy 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 the lord god almighty who was who is and who is to come the beginning and the end the aleph and tau the only god yes. you are yahova rafa the god of our healer you heal us oh god you comfort us you educate us and you come you you lead us and guide us lord we worship you for the coal which you have touched our lips and sanctified and purified our lips it is the blood of christ which you have applied to our hearts lord removing every bringing every thought into captivity of christ Amen. so that oh god we can worship and adore you oh lord you replaced all things and you brought us our identity in you amen we 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 recognize that identity in christ it is the highest sacrifice which happened on cross and our identity is as per the cross because of the cross we have a place where god has given us spirit of adoption and we can address you abba father we worship you we say hallelujah to your name lord abba so much of love for all of us that you gave us this privilege that we can call you abba father you adopted us through the lineage, through the blood of christ you sanctified us purified us o oh lord and you are taking us further Yeah. Oh hallelujah to your name oh God. Oh Lord. We glory. We say hallelujah to your name. You reign, you reign, you reign. We glorify. We say glory to you. Glory. Yes Father God. In the name of Yahushua Hamashiach we have worship. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Um Father we thank you for the Angela I'm going to ask you to do the bread today, the body of Jesus Christ, and Christine, I'm going to have you do the cup. All right. So, prepare the elements. We do this in remembrance of the incredible covenant meal that we recognize during this Passover season. We recognize the power of the covenant meal. We thank you for it, Jesus. We thank you that we can participate. Abba Father, we come before you in great humility and in gratitude. My heart is just overwhelming of how much you love each one of us and what you did to show us your love you send our messiah yeshua messiah and he was willing to take upon himself in his body his body was broken his body was crushed his body was pierced his body was hit with a cat of nine tails his back was torn to shreds so that they could even see his organs and when they nailed him to that cross he could hardly even breathe but he held on to that cross so he could say it is finished amen 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 and so father we just want to take this bread partake of this bread that represents his body and his body was broken that it could be given to the world so lord i ask that we be willing to lay down our lives and be broken and be given to the nations as your true bread that they may see christ in us the hope of glory and their desire would be to know you and serve you. So Father God, we take this bread and we thank you for Yeshua HaMashiach. You may eat the bread.
Abba, Father, you said in your word, oh, to him, whoever loved us and once for all lose us and freed us from our sin by your blood. You gave it all. You gave your head. You gave your hands. You gave your feet, the whole body. And from there, the blood, your blood flowing, have flowed like a river. We thank you, God, that the blood of our Yeshua HaMashiach has cleansed us from all sin in whom we have redemption, in whom there's redemption through your blood, the forgiveness of sin for us and our family and the people of the earth, that you will save the people from their sin. You gave your life for our sins. Oh God, we thank you. We thank you. We could not thank you enough in whom the redemption through this blood, the forgiveness, of, the, of our sin, Lord, we thank you now that for, but now in Christ Jesus, who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we decree that over our family, that our family will be translated from darkness to light because that's what your word said, Lord God, because of the covenant of the blood. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for Christ's death on the cross. Oh, hallelujah. Has made us peace with God by, for all of his blood. Amen. Reconciled us. And we have given that powerful peace that only comes from you. We bless you and we thank you, oh God. Go ahead and take it. Amen. Father, we ask that every word that was spoken today be sealed for time and eternity. We ask that these words be recorded in the books of heaven. We ask that the angel armies be released on our behalf so that we see the blessing of the Lord that makes us rich with every spiritual gift in heavenly places that is legally ours by right of our eternal covenant with Almighty God. We seal this work in the blood of the Lamb by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the word of God. We declare according to Isaiah 55, 11, that every word in agreement with the will of the Father should not return empty without accomplishing what he desires and without succeeding in the matter for which it was sent. Amen. We declare that the Holy Spirit's breath, joy, life is upon these prayers. Yes. We declare that the enemy shall not release against our lives or our families any curses, counter curses, strategies, or retaliations against our health, marriages, children, grandchildren, finances, ministries, businesses, properties, destiny, or well-being, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. and amen. amen.